gluten-free Christmas gingerbread. Welcome to Believe It's Not Gluten, the home of amazing recipes for the gluten intolerant. Amazing because they taste so good no one will know they're gluten-free. Making gingerbread is really quite easy with this method, a bit time consuming but not hard. They're really delicious and if you don't have a lot of time make them thicker rather than thinner because then they'll be less rolling out. So start by getting 125 grams of nice soft butter into a medium mixing bowl and add 125 grams of brown sugar. Then you need to cream the butter and sugar. This will take a few minutes. I've always liked these flexible silicone bowls for mixing with a hand beater but I found a new use today. You can squeeze the top of the bowl together to stop the flour flying out when you get around to adding that. So wipe down the sides of the bowl as you need to and keep going until it starts getting pale and creamy looking. Once that's done, add 170 grams of golden syrup give it another mix. Then one egg yolk and vanilla essence. Beat it again until it's pale and creamy and then add the flour mix. The recipe's on the blog. So here I'm squashing the bowl so the flour doesn't fly out so much. So mix it as well as you can with the mixer. Then you can tip it out and give it a bit of a knead with your hands to form it into a ball of smooth dough. Wrap it in plastic wrap Leave it in the fridge for at least a couple of hours. Then when you're ready to make your gingerbread, bring it out of the fridge and let it get back to room temperature. See how it is when you unwrap it? Usually it's fine to just roll out, but if it's a bit crumbly, just knead it again to get it smooth so you can roll it. Now the easiest way to roll out these biscuits is between two sheets of baking paper. So just take half your ball of dough and put it on a sheet of baking paper. Then squash it out into a neat shape. This helps stop some of the ragged edges you often get when rolling pastry. Cover it with another sheet of paper and then roll it out until it seems that the rolling isn't working anymore. That just means it's sticking to the paper and can't move, so you need to release it from the paper. So lift the paper on the top and put it back, turn it over and lift the paper that was on the bottom. Put that back and then it will roll easily again for a little while until it sticks again. I'm not using any flour here to help. Usually you don't need any with this recipe, but you can sprinkle with a little tapioca flour if you need to. The benefit of not using flour is that it doesn't matter how many times you re-roll the dough. The last biscuits will still be as good as the first ones. Whereas if you're adding flour all the time, the last biscuits can be a bit tough. So you can just roll until you think you have them right, but I like to use a guide. I have these rulers that are two millimeters thick and these give thin, crispy gingerbread. So the rulers just go on each side and you keep rolling. When you have it to the right thickness, you'll feel or hear the rolling pin along the rollers. So 
once you have it to the thickness you want, just take off the top sheet of paper and cut out your shapes. If you leave enough room between them to allow for a bit of spreading as they cook, you won't have to move the biscuits to put them on the tray to cook. So you just take away the scraps. And then slide your biscuit tray underneath. This is especially good if you're making thin gingerbread because once you start moving them from one place to another the shapes get a bit distorted. Then just carry on with the second half of the dough. So the thickness of the gingerbread can be anything you like from about 2mm thick to 5mm thick. These thin ones will give a really thin light crispy biscuit which you can ice and they're delicious with a cup of tea. Otherwise you can make them as thick as 5mm which I also love because as you leave them iced for a few days they get progressively softer until you have thick, soft, delicious gingerbread if you like it that way. And then you can choose any thickness in between. Once again, Cut out your shapes, leaving enough space for spreading so you don't have to move them when you put them on the tray. I try to roll my dough in a similar shape to the baking tray, so when I cut out the shapes they pretty much fit on the baking tray without me moving them. Once that's done, bundle the leftovers together and roll again. So remember when it gets hard to roll, it's because it's stuck to the paper. So don't just press harder when it doesn't seem to be working. Just stop, release the paper, turn it over, release the paper again and start over. We just keep going with smaller and smaller leftover bits until you've used all the dough. When ready, they go into the oven for only about 10 minutes if thin and up to 15 to 20 minutes if they're thicker. You just want them to be golden brown. Don't over brown them or they will taste burnt and not be nice. When they come out, leave them on the trays to cool. Or if you need the trays, just slide them on their paper onto a bench and let them cool on the paper. You can see here these are really quite thin. To make thicker ones, I've Two rulers, one's about two millimetre thick and one about three, so I'm aiming for a five millimetre thick gingerbread. You need to leave a bit extra room for spreading with the thicker ones. See here I had some of them a bit close and they've joined, which isn't good for the look of them. So I think these need icing. Traditionally it's royal icing made with icing sugar and egg white and maybe some lemon juice. The thin ones just need a little icing but the thick ones are good with more. Before I was gluten free I loved them with icing and Smarties. Um, but there's no gluten-free version of that, so it's back to icing. A few lollies or some chocolate does go down well. With the thicker ones, you can also dip them in a thin royal icing and leave them to dry well. This will soften the gingerbread straight away, so you really need to store them in the freezer after this or they'll get softer and softer each day. Hope you enjoy them. Please visit the blog for the full recipe and plenty of tips so that you can make them successfully yourself. If you like this, please subscribe to our channel below and give us a thumbs up. 
Make your comments or questions or requests here or join us on Facebook and please share our videos as much as you can. Thank you for watching and believe it, it's not gluten.